Razer are rather well known for their premium gaming products, and it's not too unheard of that you would hear the phrase Razer tax when talking about the price tag of some of those, and so I was kind of surprised to hear that Razer were bringing out a budget gaming headset that's meant to be a sort of all-day gaming headset and have very few compromises for the price. What is most interesting to me is that this headset is about £50, at least at the time of filming and in the UK, which makes it the cheapest headset to do, all barring their Electra. So with this relatively low price, what corners did they actually cut to get down to that price from their more standard Kraken lineup? Well, the first one is build quality. The materials they've used here aren't the nicest, most premium feeling materials in the world. They're certainly not awful, but it does feel relatively cheap in the hand thanks to the cheap plastics, the sort of faux open ear style or open back design on the sides, uh, the overall lack of uh, sort of support in the headset uh, and reinforcements, and the overall just general build quality and feel. Comfort with the Kraken X really wasn't all that great for me. I actually found that my head ended up hurting after only a few minutes despite Razer claiming this is an all-day headset. Now that is mostly due to fairly tight clamping force and that is actually something that will improve over time as the headset sort of beds in but it's something to be aware of that it might not be all that comfortable when you first get it out of the box unlike a number of other headsets. With that said though, the actual faux leather on the ear cups and the headband was actually really reasonably nice quality. It's certainly not the, the plushest material you'll find, but it's certainly good enough. The other thing that's good enough is the padding on both the ear cups and the headband as well. While I wouldn't call it plentiful, it's certainly good enough. Something else that's kind of very unrazor is the lack of RGB. Now this is mostly because it's a 3.5mm headset, which by the way, it does come with an adapter from the 4-pole connection that's on it to uh, a separate headphone and microphone jacks if your device needs that, but generally speaking, um, because that gives you better compatibility, it also does mean that you can't really have RGB built in, and so bear that in mind. Obviously, as I said, you've got that sort of faux open ear design on the side with a Razer logo, so as long as you're okay with that and, you know, you can't really see RGB in headsets anyway, then you're all good there. Audio quality is an area where they also cut a few corners. For me, anyway, the audio quality was pretty muddy and rather unclear. The, the trebles really weren't there, and they seem to mask that by bringing the bass way up. I'm talking like head-shaking levels of bass, uh, and that's certainly not bad. I know that a lot of people do like that, but it is a very common method of kind of masking other audio quality issues and so you're not going to be having the perfect fidelity experience but at this price point I don't think it's too bad. It's certainly good enough for gaming, you won't have any issues with hearing footsteps from your enemies in game or whatever like that but generally speaking obviously it's just not going to be the, the most pristine audio experience you can have. Where the headset really redeems itself is its microphone. Here's a quick test. The Kraken X's microphone is actually pretty decent, it doesn't have any of the wind noise issues that the HS35 had, but it still has the same sort of overall quality. It's still pretty clear and actually pretty impressive for a budget headset microphone, and I don't think you'd have any problems using this with Discord or TeamSpeak or whatever else for calling to your friends. Now the elephant in the room, or should I say the elephant on the shelf behind me, uh, is the Corsair HS35. This is a headset that was launched a couple of weeks after the Kraken X. It sells for 35 to 40 pound rather than the 50 that this one sells for, and generally has a very similar value proposition. In my subjective and personal experience, I would say that the Corsair one has better comfort and also a slightly better audio quality, although subjectively a worse microphone, mostly just because of the lack of windshielding and so you have to be kind of careful where you place it, where, whereas I didn't seem to have that issue with this one. With that said, they're both 3.5mm headphones. Uh, the only difference is that the HS35 has a detachable microphone, which in theory could mean that it'd be a little bit more usable on the day-to-day -day for your commute to school or work or whatever ever if you wanted to do that, but uh, either way, they're still pretty similar. Now, one thing Razer did want to point out is their new 7.1 surround software. This is software that you can only download with a product code that comes in the box, and so it does make it a little bit more exclusive than some other options. Uh, the main thing for me is that in my subjective experience and personal experience, I haven't really seen a benefit from any 7.1 audio uh, software or digital 7.1 audio in a standard headset uh, in games. 
And so for me, that wouldn't be a, a major contributing factor to which headset I would pick, but it could be for you. And so I wanted to, to just mention it. So would I put these on my desk? Well, the short answer here is probably not. While I, as I said, I already use a, what I would call better tier headset than either of these. My general experience is that for me personally, the comfort and audio quality of the HS35 plus the, the lower price tag is where I'd be heading. Of course, if you prefer a slightly tighter clamping pressure, if you prefer uh, the sort of faux leather ear cups, or you prefer the, the better microphone, or even the 7.1 audio software, then it could be a decent enough value add to you to go with the Razer option rather than the Corsair one, but that is up to you. With that said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you interested in either of these headsets? If so, which one? And I'd be interested to hear why as well. Uh, feel free to leave that in the comments down below. Of course, if you want to pick up one of these headsets, you can take a look at the link in the description down below. It will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and where you watch this. If you want to see more video videos like this one or a load of other general PC gaming tech content every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, then you can take a look at that subscribe button with a bell notification icon too. I'd also love it if you take a look at the merch store because this new t-shirt is just in and I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. I really like the design uh, and I'm very happy that I spent like three days designing it, so do check that out as well. There's also the usual Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links which don't cost you anything to use but massively help me out when you do use them. Or you can check out Patreon if you want to get cool you know, rewards like t-shirts like this one if you go for the higher tiers and of course support me directly too. There's also Humble Bundle which is a, a good way to get to cheap games and support charities or private internet access to your rate and cheap VPN and you can also check out some more videos over there if you fancy. Otherwise that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions leave us in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video.